Well, they say that honesty in preaching is a good thing, so my honest response to today's gospel is it's got me stumped. All week, around and around, I read and sought to discern something from it, paused and prayed, allowed daily life and experiences to flow through the passage, to flow through me, to see what might arise in response to this gospel. And, well, not a lot. Well, in fairness, quite a lot, but very disparate things. Scraps of thought that never seemed to quite coalesce. And, of course, it bothered me. My ego is such that it demanded of me that I should at least have something vaguely cogent to share with you today. As the week progressed, I became increasingly alarmed, and it suddenly struck me. I woke up, I think, 6 o'clock Thursday morning, maybe not knowing was my response. Maybe sharing the various threads and scraps of response that arose in me, having spent some time with the gospel, would be sufficient. And we together can weave together if we can find something that makes any sense. So that's what I bring to you today. Along the way, as I sought the shared wisdom of others far more erudite than I, I felt some relief to discover some of them also saying they weren't quite sure what the author of the text was having Jesus say. Today's gospel passage from John has many a mixed metaphor, or figure of speech as the text refers to it. We begin with a sheepfold and a gatekeeper who lets a shepherd for the, sh shepherd for the sheep to bring, let the shepherd in. The sheep know the shepherd because they recognize the voice and their name that is called. The shepherd leads them out from the sheepfold and the sheep follow. We hear that thieves and bandits can get into the sheepfold but not through the gate. This so far seems okay, metaphor part. Apparently no one that is listening understands what Jesus is talking about, so the author of John has Jesus interpret. I am the gate. Pardon? I didn't see that coming, not once, but twice Jesus says, I am the gate. So we know it's not a mistake. Okay, so now Jesus is the gate. Even so, the sheep only listen to the one who calls them, are saved, come in and go out, find pasture and have life abundantly. They are not stolen or killed or destroyed by thieves and bandits. It seems rather as if the author of today's snippet of scripture got very excited and decided to throw in a whole bunch of pastoral images associated with divine care from scripture to see what would happen. For should this passage have continued, we have Jesus declare, I am the good shepherd. But let's not go there today. Now, I know that such passage is metaphorical. I'm not intending to try and figure it out in a literal sense. However, in the first part of that reading, the bit before Jesus uncomfortably clarifies what he is saying, I would have thought that Jesus was pointing to himself as the shepherd, the one admitted to the sheepfold by the gatekeeper, the one who goes into the sheepfold, whose voice the sheep hear when the shepherd calls his own sheep by name the one who leads his sheep out, the one who, when all his own are brought out, goes ahead of them and the sheep follow because they know his voice. Interestingly, the following sheep go out. That's all. They leave the sheepfold and follow. Who knows where? Well, we could have a bit of fun with this, especially if we approached it with the intention to exclude, to claim privilege or status of divine stature and approval. Sure, we're told this is a figure of speech, but what fun has been had with it over the years by those who have aligned themselves as Jesus' followers. Just take the image of a sheepfold. When you have that image in your mind, what pops into your head? Is it, what might you associate that with in life? Perhaps the word church pops into your head, or perhaps Christianity pops into your head, or some manner of concrete entity that does tend to have innies and outies. Perhaps it's a place or a space that keeps you safe, 
together away from all manner of threatening beasties. Now, it isn't to judge such thought as right or wrong, simply to indicate how we've been shaped to hear and to think about this text. Sure, the sheepfold does conjure up images of a safe and enclosed resting place for sheep or other herded flock to protect them from the marauding dangers in the wild. That is true. And such image is useful to portray a protective place of refuge or sanctuary in the figure of speech context. However, to be equally useful outside of such metaphorical context requires an other than literal translation. translation. I was also interested to note that thieves and bandits appear to be an ever-present danger to the sheep when they're in the sheepfold. So if we were to interpret that the shepherd is Jesus, he enters the gate, calls his own sheep who respond to his voice and their name. These sheep are called from, to follow Jesus from the safety of the sheepfold. What we hear in our translation are these words, when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. But literally translated from the Greek, this more accurately reads, when he drives out his own, he goes before them. That Greek verb used to drive out literally means to throw out. It often has a sense of violence or coercion. And you know where else it's used? It's used in John 2, when Jesus is driving out the sheep and the oxen and the people selling in the temple. In this case, the shepherd drives out the sheep, but by going ahead of them and calling them, they hear his voice and follow. To me, it quite changes the sentiment of calling from gently following a shepherd's lead to being impelled to journey away from a place of comfort and safety, trusting only in the voice of the one that calls. That the shepherd goes into the fold and calls his own by name, and these sheep follow, because they know the voice, suggests that there might be other sheep in that fold. It is not an exclusive joint. What's more, a little later in this same chapter of John, we hear Jesus speak of having different sheep in different folds. So yes, what we hear is that some of those sheep hear Jesus' voice and follow, and some don't. That's all we hear. We can decide to interpret this to mean we have had a sense of being called by name and we know others who speak of their sense of responding to their name being called, all well and good. The invitation to then judge and exclude others who seem not to have responded to Jesus' call, that is something else. So now we transition to the second part of today's text, when the author of John's Gospel helpfully, or otherwise, has Jesus explain this figure of speech. Apparently, it is plain to see that this lets us illustrates that Jesus is the gate for the sheep, by or through whom the sheep come in and go out and find pasture. Now we know where they're going. Immediately, I imagine, we hear the interpretation of this text narrow, not necessarily because of what is before us, these words of John's Gospel, but perhaps because of other scriptural passages suggesting that few will enter by the narrow gate, that few will pass through the eye of the needle, or John's later words that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It doesn't say that here, but those texts we tend to bring to accompany what we hear. But how might we understand, therefore, the role of a gate? However we interpret a sheepfold, I think it's fair to say it's a place that we come to and we go from. A gate is a place of transition, with purpose to provide an access way. Generally speaking, those who pass through a gate are noticed. A gate enables coming and going. A gate signals, identifies that there is a place or a space to come from, to go to, and to come from. Unlike a wall that's fixed, movability is the function of a gate, to enable flow. Given the tendency to want to get a fix on Jesus, perhaps utilize him to filter the acceptability or otherwise of those not like us, 
Such image of gate as enabling and allowing flow, flexibility of function and purpose is curious. Even though in this explanation of the figure of speech Jesus is gate, somehow the sheep still listen to the voice that calls. For we hear all who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. In the interpretation, we also discover where the sheep go out to, pasture. Sustenance is found outside the sheepfold. The text does say that those who enter by the gate, by Jesus, will be saved. Commentators confirm that this is not about eternal life. It is being saved from thieves and bandits. The sheep who enter through the gate will come in and go out and find pasture. They will have life and have it abundantly. It does not say that no one else will come to and go from the sheepfold. Mixed metaphors, fluidity of meaning, possibilities of understandings, the challenge of getting a fix from which to present an argument, a way to interpret or understand this text, got me this week. Snippets and fragments of wondering is all that occurred to me with no way to wrestle them into a cogent form. Maybe that is a learning, that we're forever trying to wrestle God to ground, to lay our hands on divine purpose and meaning so we can tout it as the meaning, the knowing, the wisdom for this place and time. It is uncomfortable to abide with an elusive, ever-revealing, ever-morphing God who seems to reveal and conceal in equal measure. For it rather pushes us to depend on relationship, relational flow, if you like, and that might require us to spend a bit of time in relationship, developing our relationship with the divine, so to strengthen our bonds of understanding and trust. You know what? It would be far easier to be certain and to be concrete and to be told what to do.